Do we have the bad? Do we have the Sam Harris tweet? I want to do the bad, and then we'll get to more of this. Uh... More of this uh... Marion Williamson thing. So <laughs> I'll just say in my book against the web, infuriating and highly satisfying to write the Sam Harris chapter. And look, in my opinion, the guy is a dense bigot with an incredibly overrated intellect. And the disturbing thing is the function that he plays in society for laundering so many delusional attitudes. But uh, before we tee off on this, we need to play our uh, bad intro. Not good. Not good. <laughs> Believe me, not good. No good. Really bad for you. Not good. <laughs> Believe me, not good. <laughs> so, and we'll all tee off in this in a second. But, you know, right now we have a president who is sending racist, you know, and again, at their core, I think even Sam Harris, it would probably be somehow able to puncture his shockingly limited perception that telling four United States citizens to go back to where they came from because of political disagreement uh, has at least some degree of xenophobia and is sending the wrong signals. Let me use uh, Sam. Let me use Sam type language when he's not talking about Islam or the left. When his he has nothing but hyperbole and melodrama. Let me use uh, more gentle language for this. So that's happening. There is a piece in the Wall Street Journal. It's a classic dishonest smearing op-ed about Ilan Omar by a far-right Zionist, with all the stuff that we know. And I say that, by the way, very specifically. I, I, in my politics, are not Zionist because I don't, I'm not a nationalist, and I like the idea of a full, equal democracy for all human beings in the Middle East and full cultural autonomy and protection. But there are liberal Zionists. There are absolutely Zionists that don't lie about Ilan Omar. Peter Beinart as far as I understand, still supports a two-state, 67-border solution and has been quite clear that lying and distorting Ilan Omar's position is dishonest and bigoted. Ayn Hirsi Ali, whose personal trauma we can understand and sympathize with, but whose infantile reactionary politics we should reject every single time she pops up, retweets this trash article about Ilan Omar on the day that she is getting threatened by the president of the United States and Sam Harris in a beautifully clar in a beautifully cowardly move does the retweet revealing his priorities which is of course not what the president is doing but an example to spe spread utter calumny about an endangered congressperson and then uh, look, and this is my perception, but my interpretation of doing this is that Sam Harris engage, engages consistently in the most stupid and vulgar identity politics. One identity politics of the identity politics that he has no understanding of, which is that he has his own very, very strong identity politics, which shapes his paranoia, delusions, and 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 horrific worldview. But also the fact that his one of his standalone responses to anything and his complete inability to think historically and critically is I and Hershey Ali is a friend. I I know I, I, I no no I, I know I and Hershey Ali, you're smearing me. So in classic Harris manner, he's gonna retweet her and launder her grotesque smears of Ilan Omar while not focusing on the prime actual action of this country right now. And this is, again, this is real bargain basement stuff. This is the type of thing, and I know people, you know, some of it's generational. I know people who are like, again, they're not assholes and they're not dishonest, so they're willing to, you know, they're not, but they, they'll say like, hey, I don't, I don't like the way, I still don't like how she talked about, you know, Israel in 2012 or whatever. Okay, fine. But they're focusing right now on what matters most. 
which is that she's being targeted by the president of the United States in the context of teaming up with four other people to fight concentration camps. Oh, I'm sure I haven't heard about that from Sam Harris. Anyways, he's, just, he's an asshole. And if you're still, I mean, look, you got to read the book. But I mean, if you're still defending this guy, I mean, come on. Also, I am embarrassing. <clears throat> Ayanna Hersey Ali owes her career to identity politics and standpoint epistemology. Pure, pure standpoint epistemology and identity politics. And I, and I do. I reject that position. Look, the distinction, obviously, your life experience, your identity informs your politics and your understanding. Anybody who would say that that isn't true or that's somehow illegitimate is either delusional, dishonest, or stupid. Conversely, if the end point of your argument for whatever it is, good or, you know, in a, in a global sense, you know, it's one thing to talk about in the context of certain issues in your own community, absolutely. But if your only singular fallback for everything is my identity dictates, I understand this global statement better than you. No, I reject that. Sorry. Well, That's, and that is literally her response to everything. That's why Ayn Hirsi Ali can go to Israel and have nothing to say about the occupation or racism there, but notice that women wear bikinis, so it must be an enlightened society. Yeah, and for years, you know, she's been the new atheist's go-to. You know, she goes right. on Bill Maher a, mu a bunch, yeah, and it's like, oh yeah, we're not racist because she's the one saying it. You know? Right, she's the one saying it, she's the one, you know. It's, it's a good it's, grift. It's embarrassing. My old I look, it might be sincere, but it's, you know, yes. And, and I just want to always, David, I want you to say this in a second, but just give me 10 seconds to always say Ina from uh, a Nice Mango. What is the name of her show? Yeah, Nice Mango. Nice Mangoes. Ina, right? Ina Muhammad. Yep. Ina Muhammad, who does a, I don't, I actually really strongly disagree with her in some areas, ironically, including on some of this sort of stuff. But she does a great, incredibly thoughtful show. And also, again, speaking from the perspective of a woman, a Muslim background, she had an opportunity to get in on that game and didn't take it because of her total intellectual and moral integrity. And those motherfuckers reject her now. Believe me. They, when you have even, and she still is quite consistent and steady in her critiques of Islam and Islamic theocracy. You think, but, but she's also, you know, not into like racism or the alt-right as an example. Oh, boy, are they not interested in what she has to say now. And she should get everybody's, you know, support and solidarity because she has a good show. And also she has a lot of intellectual courage, in, in my opinion. One of my old uh, philosophy professors used to have a good line against people who would base their arguments in philosophy only on their life experiences. Right. He would say, you know, I can tell you have a stupid argument, but I can't tell you you've had a stupid life. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. You've just watched a Michael Brooks show video, and you can watch all of our full main live shows every Tuesday night at around 7 p.m. Eastern time, and subscribe to get all of the clips you want. We're covering the globe. We're focusing on international relations, the intellectual dark web. We're having fun. We're doing deep dives with a lot of amazing guests. Of course, become a patron for the whole thing at patreon.com slash tmbs or subscribe to this YouTube channel and help us keep growing and get that content out there. Subscribe below.